Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Welcome. My name is Erin O'Brien. I'm a Thermix Consultant and Team Leader based in Druin in Victoria. I am um, Thermo Loving Mum on Facebook and Instagram. And I'm here with my team, the Mix Masters, tonight to bring you guys a, a virtual cooking class all about lunch boxes and some sharing some great recipes, some hints and tips that we think might help you um, as we head back into the new year, new school year and the new school term. Um, so please, if you've got any questions as we're going, anything at all, please don't hesitate to pop them in the chat box. Um, we are here to help you uh, learn as much as you can. So um, I'm going to get us started straight away tonight. I am cooking um, what is just a basic bread dough recipe, really, um, a bread it's a sandwich loaf essentially, um, but I'm going to make it into three different things that are perfect for lunch boxes and all freezer friendly. So just showing you how you can use a really simple and easy dough um, to make quite a few different things that your kids are all going to love. So um, I'm very excited actually, and this is one of my favorite recipes that I have been using. I've been a Thermix owner for um, probably like seven years now. Um, I initially had the TM5 and then I joined to upgrade to the TM6. I actually joined in our Earn 4 offer three years ago and I'm very excited that it's back now. It's my favourite offer in the world. If you, uh, Earn 4 is something you're interested in, please reach out to us now. Um, I'd love to chat to you about that. Um, but, yeah, so I've had a Thermomix for about seven years and I have loved the Thermo Mama bread recipe for that time. I use it. I get lots of questions about what bread dough I use and I've used it um, for years and years and years. So I'm very excited that um, it's recently been added to Cookie Do as part of the Best of the Recipe community collection. Um, so no longer have to um, add, import that one from the recipe community or cook it manually. It's part of our guided cooking, which is amazing. How great is it that guided um, cookie do just keeps adding new recipes and new things all of the time? Has anyone used any, this recipe or any of the recipes from that new Best of the Recipe community collection? It's a great one. It's got a few of my favourite recipes on there. The uh, chop chip cookies are a good one too, if you're wondering. So it is the Thermo Mama White Sandwich Bread Loaf. So as always, we could scroll down and have a read if you want. Um, sometimes it's handy to scroll down to hit hints and tips. Um, but otherwise, we're just going to hit start cooking and get into it. I love this recipe because it is really super easy. I didn't grab water, sorry, two seconds. Um, super easy. You're literally just throwing all your ingredients in together and then turning it onto me. So very little hands-on time. Hopefully, I'm really sorry, my husband's decided to mow the lawn <laughs> at this hour of night. Hopefully that's not too noisy for you outside. A bit lawn obsessed, and we've been on holidays. I don't know how we cope to not mowing the lawns for a week. Anyway, <laughs> uh, one teaspoon of sugar in there, one and a half teaspoons of dried yeast. You always need to make sure you are keeping your yeast in the fridge or the freezer. Um, keeps it alive and keeps it active. If you pop it in the pantry, um, you might find that it's not going to work after a little while. So pop that in the fridge. And then some baker's flour. So 450 grams baker's flour. For a big tub, we get our baker's flour from Costco. So um, we have quite a lot and go through quite a lot of it. If anyone made this recipe before, pop it in the chat box and let me know. I also forgot to ask, um, please pop in the chat box and let us know if you have a Thermomix, what bottle do you have? Um, or is the Thermomix something if you're thinking about what we're hoping to get out of our class tonight, pop in the chat box and let us know. It's always handy to um, get a bit of an idea of who's on and what you're looking to get out of it to make sure that we can help with those. So 450 grams of baker's flour. Next again, one and a half teaspoons of salt. Next, one and a half teaspoons of bread improver. I often get asked whether you need the bread improver. Look, you can get away with not using it, but it does give you better results um, when you do use it. You can also use apple cider vinegar as a replacement if you don't have it, um, but I do recommend finding it in the supermarket. Most All supermarkets will have it, um, but it does give you a, a nicer, fluffier dough that will last a bit longer as well. So that's all our ingredients in there. Then we're going to hit next, pop our lid on, and now I've got a six-minute knead time. So you can see the dough symbol there is the um, symbol for our kneading mode. 
So it's just going to knead away for us and do its thing for six minutes, hands-free. Um, so those of you who might not be aware, two minutes of kneading in our thermomix is equivalent to about 20 minutes of hand kneading. So that's going to give us, what, two, four, six, six, uh, an hour of hand kneading that it's going to do for us in six minutes while we're free to do anything else, which is just incredible. So I'm going to start that and we are going to head on over to Maddie, who will introduce herself and cook some muffins for us. Hi everyone, my name is Maddie Arbuthnot and I've um, joined Thermomix in June. Um, I didn't really hear about Thermomix much before um, I decided to purchase and then I thought, oh, well, why not join the team and share what I know? Um, so I have a 21 month old little girl. Um, so um, I know I'm expecting another one in May. So I'm really looking forward to um, seeing how the Thermomix can really help us when we've got who under our feet <laughs> sooner than, um, than we know it. And I was cooking recipes that are much more hands free and things like that. So this recipe is super, super easy. Um, it's 10 minutes hands on and 20 minutes about that in the oven. So I've actually made this before work, um, to put it on before I got my daughter up, made it and then come back and it's pretty much ready to go. Um, really, really tasty lunchbox um, item as well. It's really good to add in the freezer and pull out. Um, I do use some adjustments, so I'll talk about them as I go through the recipe as well. Um, and if you're a muffin lover like me and our family, I'd love to hear from you as well. So the first step is to turn the oven on. So if you need to use any other appliance other than your thermix, it will tell you to do that. So my oven has been on for about 180 degrees. Uh, if your oven burns a bit hotter, maybe just turn it down a smidge. Um, I've already greased some muffin pans. This recipe does say it makes 12, but I can get about... Uh, 15 muffins out of it. You don't want to fill them ginormously because they will bulge a bit. Um, and what I actually had using is I'm using a 12 panner and I've also got our rose gold mini muffin pan. So I'm going to make this for my daughter um, so that she's got some things for when she goes to grandparent daycare in a few weeks. Um, so this is basically asked for 150 grams of gra uh, Granny Smith apples. And I generally add about two apples and that gives me about 2.30, so it's a bit more, but I actually turn down the sugar as well. So it sort of evens out a little bit in my books. Um, cored, peeled, and then cut into quarters. We're then going to turn that to speed seven for three seconds. It's gonna chop them all off. ask us to transfer that to a bowl and set aside so in three seconds it's chopped our apple up so small um that i would never be able to do that by hand so save yourself a million um minutes in the kitchen i think <laughs> so i've just got a bowl next to me and putting that in uh, if you weren't happy with the consistency so if you had a bit too much apple um you could add it in a bit more. Um, all steps in cookie do, you can go back and repeat step, which is really good um, if you've gone a bit over um, with your stuff. Um, Dusting this for 90 grams of butter cut into pieces. Uh, and this is also another perfect example of something that might need to be added a little bit longer. So depending on if you've got your butter straight out of the fridge versus if it's been sitting on your bench for a little bit, it may need a little bit more time to melt. I'm putting the lid back on. And I'm going to melt that for a minute. It does say at the bottom of my screen, I can pull it up to a minute and a half if necessary. So if I was getting the butter straight out of the fridge, I probably would strip it straight to a minute and a half. And then I can then adjust that to see how it's going at that point. Um, also, apple and cinnamon or raspberry chuck, awesome. They're my favourite flavours too. So this is an apple and cinnamon muffin recipe, um, which... Um, yeah, it's really, really tasty as well. Um, while that's melting, I did also make a spice, which is really tasty for um, adults and other kids as well. Um, this is um, called an Ar caramel almond peanut slice. Um, and I have omitted different nuts, um, depending on what I had in the pantry at the time. So I want to show you what I've made so far. We are going to finish it after we've done our muffins. So what's in here is... Um, about, uh, that recipe said 150 grams, I actually added 200 grams of almonds and cashews 
and um, uh, the other one, dates, sorry, dates, this is the other one. Um, and I ground them all up in about, I don't know, 10 seconds or so, because um, I added a bit more of each of them. I did um, do the speed again and um, I made them so it was nice and consistent. Got coconut oil in it, um, honey and almond butter. And then you just mix that all together, pop it in your fridge for two hours so it gets nice and cool. And then the last step is then to add some chocolate over the top. So a bit of a guilt-free guilt -free recipe, really, really tasty. Uh, once you get one slice, uh, just warning you now, you'll have one or two more than that. <laughs> so our butter is melted. Not quite, there's a few chunky bits in there. So I'm just going to go back a step and it needs another 20 seconds or so. Just for that to melt through. Has anyone made this apple and cinnamon muffin recipe before? TM5 or TM6 owners? All right, that's looking a lot better. So now we're going to add one egg. And the side of your bowl has got a slight lip on it. It's perfect for cracking eggs on it, I find. Um, we're then going to add 180 grams of full cream milk, which I had evidently forgot to get it out of the fridge. Or 187 grams of milk. So a good thing about cookie dough is you can uh, add a bit over, a bit under. It's not going to affect the recipe too much. And if it is um, really um, specific on that, it will tell you at the start of the recipe. So 250 grams of self-raising flour. That should be the fat. Tablespoon of honey. And unfortunately, I'm one of those people who doesn't measure anything. So I'm just going to do a big squeeze of honey in there, teaspoon of ground cinnamon, um, again I'm just going to do a bit of a shake, less is more sometimes if you're not a huge cinnamon fan, um, and 100 grams of brown sugar. Now because I'm making this for my family and my um, daughter, I actually turn down the sugar, which is another good thing about these recipes, is that you could turn down things, add things, omit things, and it's not going to affect it too much. Um, again, because I've got more apple I'm throwing in there, again, it sort of evens out a little bit as well. And we're just going to combine that for five scallions. So this is a great way of saving time as well. Everything is super, super quick. Um, a lot of things uh, in the Thermomix just save you so much time. And then you've got quality time with your family, kids. You've got people under your feet, like I always have in my kitchen. Uh, it just is a lifesaver. So I'm just scraping the sides of the bowl and, and adding that apple. Five more seconds, and we're just going to combine that all together. The mixture to the muffin pans. Um, the next couple of steps I don't do um, is up to you whether you want to do them in your household if you had a semi mix on your bench. So you can cut the top off a couple. Of... And if you want to save time and a bit of fiddling, um, you don't have to do that as well. And the rest of it turns out perfectly fine. Sorry, Maddie, I think we lost you for a second there. It was just you were saying just to cut um, a thin slice of apple to pop on the top, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, so it asks that. Yeah. Oh, you're, so break, asked, you're breaking up a bit. So I'll just put a thin slice of apple over the top once you've put your mixture into the. <laughs> All right, Maddie's internet's just playing games with us here. So she was just saying that the recipe asks you to um, pop a thin slice of apple over the top of the muffins when you put the um, the muffin mix into the tray. So um, that's obviously completely optional if you it looks pretty. 
Um, but if you, you know, you're in a rush and you're just doing it for school lunch boxes, it's not necessarily something I have to worry about. <laughs> makes quite a bit of me. um mix there, doesn't it, Maddie? Yeah, it makes heaps. Yeah. I've made the mistake a couple of times of only um greasing one pant and then getting into the end going, no, I don't want to overfill these. So um yeah. always grease two pants. So it does say twelve, but it makes a bit more than that. So I find the I'll same. See how many little ones it makes in this one. Um, another good thing that I love about the therapy. Oh, yeah. um, one thing I do do once I've got all my butter out is I can't quite get all of it out off the blade. So I use the turbo mode to just get that last little bit and it only gives me about another muffin or a, or a half worth out of it um, because it's just the scratch the can't get quite um, all of it off. So um, the turbo mode is a really, really useful tool. It takes one second in your thermomix. So I'm just going to go to my home and then to my modes. Make sure you've got your lid handy because it won't <laughs> actually fit anything without your lid. Um, if you didn't put your lid on before you press turbo, it won't actually do anything. So don't stress if you've forgotten to do that. Bring up one second and then just... Spinning that, it's going to ask you to make sure you leave the mode before it unlocks the arms. Again, make sure everything's settled in there. Blurt up in your face. And I've just got all of that mixture off the blade, which is amazing because then you're not wasting any food. It's an almost another oh, mini muffin. You're getting the most out of your Thermomix and the most out of your recipes. All right, so once you've popped everything um, in your trays, then you're just going to shove that in the oven for about 20, 25 minutes on 180 degrees. Um, and you can put a skewer through them to double check they are ready. I probably would turn them halfway through if your oven um, doesn't heat as evenly, um, but check them after about 15 minutes um, and then, yeah, see how they are. All right. Um, the last thing from me is I'm just going to melt that chocolate. So I've already grated the chocolate in the Thermomix, um, which took about five seconds to do for the almond slice. Um, and I have these recipes put into my weeks. So it's really easy to find once you've got your meal planning sorted as well. Um, adding them to your week, it's nice and easy to find. You can search for any of your recipes as well um, through the cookie do. Um, search bar. Um, now, if you were starting a recipe part way through, so if you already had parmesan cheese grated or if you had your chocolate already grated, you can just press the step in the main screen where you're up to. So you don't have to go through and press next, next, next a thousand times. Um, you can just skip straight to the step that you're up to. And this is just going to melt for two minutes. So once I've melted the chocolate, I'm just going to put that on top of my slice. And then I'm going to cut it straight away. So then when I um, put it back in the fridge for about 20 minutes afterwards, it's not going to break the chocolate. So you want to sort of do it as soon as you've got your chocolate laid over the top, you want to cut it um, in whatever shapes, size, sizes, whatever you want, and then pop it back in and it's ready to eat when you want. So that's it for me. If you've got any questions, love to hear from you. Um, and I'll hand over to Ethan. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks so much, Maddie. Um, we're actually coming back to me briefly. No, I'm not muted. No, all right. So my um, dough has finished kneading. Um, so if I continued on next, it's telling me to transfer it to a lightly floured or oiled silicon bread mat or bowl and cover it with plastic or wrap, plastic wrap or kitchen towel um, and leave it to proof in a warm place for 15 minutes. So I've already popped mine into my bread mat. So um, another bonus of the bread mats is that you don't have to worry about having, you know, covering it with a kitchen towel or using any cling wrap because you can just literally wrap it in the mat. So all I did, um, obviously, when it, once it's finished kneading, um, a hot little tip to do is just to 
twist the blade on the end and that will help release the dough to to um, pop it onto your mat. So um, you can obviously sometimes get a bit stuck around the blade. So just give it a little twist and it will help it release out. Um, and then if you still had some stuck around there, a bit like Maddie did before, you can use the turbo mode as well. Um, and that just flips the dough off so that you can move it out of, um, use, get the rest of it too. So I am just going to move my thermo out of the way. I've got it on a glider board so I can just quickly and easily move it. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen, but we're all very excited that um, Thermomix launched our new host reward collection this week um, with all of our usual favourites like the bread mats and the thermo service, but we've also got um, some new host rewards available. So the glider board has become a host reward. Um, we've got a 12-month cookie subscription, which is a host reward our large vacuum seal and wand, which is um, like a vacuum container that keeps food fresher for longer. And our kitchen toolkit, which is a great little, I'm going to be using the scissors tonight, but um, a set of knives, a healer, a scissors, and an ice cream scoop as well. Um, so yeah, a few different new host rewards that are going to be available long-term. So if you're interested in any of those, you know, maybe when your cookie do subscription's coming up, reach out to your consultant, um, a great opportunity to host a demo if you um have someone purchase at your demo then you'll get one of those items for free but even if no one um is ready to purchase after your demo you can still receive a discount on one of those items so really great opportunity to grab a glider board or to renew for new subscription those kind of things um, reach out to your consultant and they can help you all right so what i'm going to do tonight is make three different things with our dough. Obviously, when you're doing this at home, you can just use, you know, one batch of dough to make some scrolls or some rolls or some mini hot dogs. Um, but just for the purpose of tonight, I'm going to use one dough and just do a couple of each, which I thought would be nice and fun. So I might start by doing the rolls for our mini hot dogs. So I've just obviously divided our dough into three. Um, and these, I mean, they're similar to kind of anything really, like the muffins. You can make them as big or small as you want. Rolls, make them as big or small as you want. Especially like obviously depending on the age of your kids, that kind of thing, how much they eat, you might want to do them um, slightly bigger or slightly smaller. So you can also use your scales of thermix to weigh out your dough to make sure it's nice and even if you want to, um, but you can also just have a little guess. So I'm going to use the mini loaf tray for these. Um, this one is from the mix shop. And all I do, I do the rolls all very similar. So I use kind of my non-dominant hand as like a bit of a guide, you'll see, and then use the fingers of my dominant hand to tuck the dough as I'm gliding it. So it's kind of like creating a little, I suppose, like air pocket or, um, yeah, that kind of thing underneath. So it's just tucking back on itself. So I'll try and do it nice and slowly and hopefully easily so you can see. So I do all my rolls this way. And then when I'm doing them for the mini loaf tray, then I just give them just a slight roll. Savory lunchbox snacks. Good question, Jody. So these are probably my main go-tos. I think I've made that too big, to be honest. I'm going to do that again. Get too much dough in that. I can make an extra one. Um, so we do the mini hot dogs. We do savory scrolls, um, cheese and bacon rolls or plain rolls. Uh, the savoury scrolls we do in a couple of different flavours, like I'm going to do just plain good old Vegemite and cheese tonight, but you could do like a pizza one. I like doing pizza scrolls. Um, with, I'm not sure if you've heard of her or seen her, Thermo Pizza. She's got some beautiful cookbooks and recipes, um, but she has a very veggie pasta sauce um, or pizza pasta sauce it's called, and it's just full of veggies. And it's like, you no, know, it's just like, you know, one of those mum, mum win things where you're getting extra veggies into your kids and they have no idea. So it's a great like pasta sauce or pizza sauce um, and I like to use that for my pizza scrolls too. So um, while the kids are enjoying something they think is a treat, they're getting some nice veggies in there too. What about everybody else? Does anybody else have some other good savouries? Jess has put zucchini slice muffins. Sweet chilli and cheese scrolls. Oh, that sounds delicious. And spinach and feta. Yeah, there's some um, spinach, oh, the spinach and three cheese scrolls on cookie dough as well, which are... Um, very popular. All right, so I've done four of those mini ones. Now I am going to just do four rolls. So I think some people get a bit scared off by rolls and, again, just guide with this hand and tuck with this one. Rolls and um, scrolls and that kind of thing because they think that it is going to be hard and take a lot of time. 
but there really is not much hands-on time in it. The bread did take six minutes to knead, but I was busy doing other things while that was kneading and not worrying about that. Yeah, same try. I have to be very conscious uh, and time them. Usually I do time them to bake at this time of night so the kids are in bed so I can get into the freezer. So otherwise they're gone. <laughs> All right, so I've got four just, I'm just going to grab a smaller tray. Yeah. I'll find it. I'll just put the big one on. Um, four just plain rolls there. Pop them to the side. And then we're going to do scrolls as well. So obviously if you are using the one dough for these things, I would expect to get at least... 12 rolls or 12 um, mini hot dogs out of the one batch of dough. So now I'm just using my rolling pin. This one's from the mixed shop as well. It's called the French rolling pin. And the other great thing about the bread mat is that you don't have to oil it or flour it or anything. You'll see how easily this scroll just rolls up. All right. If again, if I was using the whole batch of dough, I would expect this to cover my bread mat. Um, so that's a good guide to kind of how thin to do it. Generally, um, it will cover the whole bread mat. Maria, I'm using the Thermo Mama bread loaf um, recipe. It's part of the new Best of the Recipe community collection on Cookie Do. I'm just going to bring my Thermo back for just a second. Um, and I'm just going to quickly grate some cheese to go. Yeah, she has great bread re dough recipes, isn't she? All right, so I'm going to cancel out of this recipe for a second because I'm just going to grate some cheese. So I'm just going to go to three little dots next to the next and then go down to cancel recipe. It'll just confirm that that is what I want to do. And I didn't hit the wrong button. I'll hit yes. Um, just a great, uh, easy way rather than mixing through it all. Go. What do I do with my clean bowl? All right, so now I've got quite a bit of cheese all just cubed up in there, just roughly chopped. And I'm going to just throw it all into the bowl. And I'm just going to do a quick straight chop, whatever you'd like to call it, on that. So um, I just do five seconds on speed seven. This will be noisy, so Zoom will mute me out for a second. All right, and that is done. So that just makes it, um, gives you a really kind of, yeah, easily grated cheese that you can spread on your scrolls. Bring that back. Now I'm going to use, so I'm just looking for one more thing. So give me two seconds, guys. Uh, so like I said, I'm just going to do um, Vegemite and cheese scrolls tonight, but I mean, the possibilities are endless really with scrolls. You can do whatever, whatever you like, whatever your kids like, all that kind of thing. So just using a big tub of Vegemite. My other hot tip for the scrolls are to use a palette knife, like a cake decorating palette knife to spread the Vegemite or the pizza sauce, whatever you're doing, because it just makes it so easy. And then you don't, you don't um, dig into your dough. I think um, when you use a knife, whatever, it's kind of hard to get the angle right, so you often cut your dough or dig into it. So spread that on with part knife. Oh, chicken and mate, that would be delicious. And then I'm just going to spread some grated cheese on that. And then we're going to roll it up. So, again, you just um, with our, so I'm just trying to make sure you can see enough there. Um, with the bread mat, we've got nothing on it, no flour or anything. 
So just going to roll it up from the edges and you just want to kind of tuck as you roll so that it makes it nice and tight. So I just keep rolling and then tuck it under as I'm rolling. Hopefully you can see that with my hands in the way. Just keep going till you get to the end, obviously. So I have seen some people, I know Jess does um, slice the scrolls first and then roll them up individually. I just, this is the way I've always done it, so I stick with that. Um, then you do need to remember that you can't puff on your silicon bread mat. So I just bring in a chopping board. And one last tip for you, a serrated knife. I know lots of people, I always get messages when I post scrolls on Instagram, whether it be these or cinnamon, about how I get them to look so nice. Um, and a serrated, little serrated knife is the key. So, um, and it obviously then like a sawing action. So, you know, one obviously looks a bit funny. I'm going to slide on my slide around a little bit not because it's on the silicon bread mat but by sawing it you're just getting a nice round scroll without squashing squashing it as you cut so these then you all of these products then your bread dough rolls doughs um, you are then going to cover and leave it until they're doubled in size so this is going to mean very different things for Everybody, depends on the weather, where you live in Australia, um, yeah, how humid it is, that kind of thing. So my other, again, I'm saying this is my last tip, but I keep adding tips. My other big tip is to never listen to the proofing time on a recipe. Um, recipes have been developed in all different places, in all different conditions, and not your kitchen, unless you've made your own. So um, always ignore A lot of recipes will say proof for half an hour or an hour, um, but I always go to doubled in size so um that's obviously i'm in victoria so in winter that can mean two hours um at this time of year it can mean you know 40 40 minutes so um always just go until it's doubled in size and then you will um get better results so for example here's some i prepared earlier so these are my scrolls so you can see they were about the same size um when started proofing them and they're ready to go in the oven now. Yeah, these, these are my mini hot dogs. I reckon these ones started a bit smaller. I reckon my dough stretched further this time. But you'll see that they have filled out. If I hold it up, you can see a nice rise on them. Filled out those um, compartments of the mini loaf tray. So then for our uh, mini hot dogs, I use my kitchen scissors again so that I'm not kind of squashing them as I'm cutting, so you can see, and just cut a slice down the middle. Of each of these. And then I add a little bit of tomato sauce. You can do like barbecue if you prefer. Um, or even leave out sauce if you know your kids are fussy and don't like sauce. So kind of squash that in the middle. And then adding our little hot dog again. So you do just want to make sure you really press it right in to your dough because it will, as the dough rises a little bit more in the oven, um, if you don't press it right in, it'll kind of pop out a little bit. So just don't be too gentle. Anyone made these before? I know you can get them in Baker's Delight, but they cost a lot more there. So it's a really good little thing to make at home. So I'm just, again, using that grated cheese. These are also a big hit with my kids, I'm sure, as you could imagine. So all of these um, things I freeze as well. They're all freezer friendly. I usually just get out things um, in the morning and pop it in the kids' lunchboxes frozen and they're defrosted by lunchtime easily. I've never had a problem. The kids are kids and they would complain if there was. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I just pop them in frozen and they're good to go. So that is then the mini hot dogs. I'll pop them in the oven in a second. 
And then lastly, we've got our rolls. So again, you can see the size difference here. So these are the ones I've just rolled now. And these are the ones that I've proofed. So yeah, quite a big difference there. So they are doubled in size as well. So I made these just over an hour ago, it would have been. Um, and what I'm going to quickly do in two seconds is chop some um, bacon to add into those as well. So I'm just going to use that same bowl that I've got the cheese in. I'm going to tip the cheese into back into the bowl I had it in originally. So if you're just making cheese and bacon rolls and you weren't doing all the other things, you could just chuck the um, chuck the bacon in with the cheese when you grate it. You don't need to do it separately. So obviously, I just did it separately tonight because um, I wanted to do other things with it. So just throw a few rushes of bacon in. I'm just going to break them in half. Pop the lid back on again. I can just do a little bit less time, maybe even like three seconds this time. Because it's not as hard as the cheese, obviously. That was one second. I stopped it because it sounded done. So one second on speed seven, and that's our chopped up ham there. Uh, bacon, sorry. Uh, I'm just going to throw some cheese in with it because I don't need all that cheese. I added a bit too much, but that's fine because it can go in the fridge. So I'll just give those a little bit, just combine them together. Just makes it easier to add them to the top of the rolls if you combine it. I'm making a huge mess here. <sighs> All right, so I'm going to do about half cheese and bacon rolls and half just plain rolls. So literally, you can add egg to the top. Some recipes will tell you to add a bit of egg to the top of your rolls. Um, it just helps it all stick there. I don't really find it's necessary. I don't mind a little bit falling off. It's nice you get to eat that crispy bit that's um, cooked onto the tray. It's delicious. <laughs> All right, and then, like I said, I'm going to leave half just plain bread rolls as well. So I'm going to pop these in the oven. They'll all, I'll keep an eye on them, but they're small, so they'll all probably take about 15-ish minutes. I'll let you know exactly what they were when they're done. Um, and we're going to head over to Ina now. Hello, how are you? Um, I'm Ema and I've had a Thermomix for about 12 years now. I had the TM31 um, and now I've got the new, I've had the new TM6 for about six months and I decided to become a consultant. Of course, it turns off now. <laughs> I'll just pop it on. Um, yeah, so I had my husband surprised me with uh, my first Thermomix at Christmas, so that was really nice. And uh, that was 12 years ago. So I've blended all the baby foods up from my kids and now they're teenagers. And the great thing is they're able to use the TM6 um, to yeah, help around the house and help cook their own snacks, which is really nice because of the guided cooking um, on the TM6. It's really easy for them to follow. So I'm really loving that. Uh, today, I'm going to make um, the zucchini cheddar slice. Uh, this is actually in the Thermomix magazine and I've been making, uh, because we grow all our own food, I've been making it flat out. So um, I, I, I am going to create a recipe. You can create recipes that you find. Um, if it's a family, old family recipes, things like anything that's in a cookbook, you can actually create your own recipes on Cookie Do and save them. So I will be doing that after this class, I think, because I've made this so many times now. Um, so you, I'm also going to use our lovely square of rose gold pans. So um, these are great. I find that the squares are amazing for just put, popping everything in the freezer and then you can take them out for lunchbox, which is and because most lunchbox containers are square, they fit in really well. Plus, if the kids are smaller, mine aren't because they're teenagers, but you can cut them into smaller squares as well. So you could get like four squares out of each one for the really little kids. Um, yeah, so, and also like any kinds of slices, quiches, um, cakes, brownies, even muffins, whatever you want to do, you can do it in this shape. And it's, I've just basically oiled them in such a great heavy duty pan and completely non-stick. So I love that you don't have to use baking paper. It's nice and sustainable. 
Uh, so we're just going. I'm just going to actually use the manual setting on the Thermomix because um, there's only quite a, a few small steps. And what I'm going to do first is pop the cheese and zucchini and some herbs in to blend up together. <laughs> we've got our lovely homegrown zucchini. We've got lots of zucchini and lots of eggs. So I'm getting to use all of these up, which is nice. And now I've just popped the herbs in. So I've got some lovely homegrown basil here and I'm going to put in six sprigs. So it's about 300 grams of zucchini and 100 grams of cheddar cheese. I have cheese already grated up because we've had a big birthday party. So that's why it's grated. But I usually grate a block like Erin does. And so then we're going to do it for uh, 10 seconds. Uh, speed six. Does everybody here love zucchini slice or what kind of slices do you like? So that, oh, it smells so good because all the herbs are infused with it, but it's just been chopped up and we'll just pop it all into the bowl. I like things grated really finely because I'm trying to hide the veggies for the kids. <laughs> um, this is a really good one for that. There's even peas in this recipe. But, you know, if you have fussy kids, you can leave the peas out. You can leave anything out. So we'll just pop that aside. The next step in the recipe is now we place the onion. So I need 50 grams of onion in this, so very small onion, and bacon. And we're going to pop this in. I've just chopped up the bacon a bit small and it's going to saute. So it's a it's quite only a few steps in this. So we're going to saute for five minutes the bacon and the onion and it's gonna caramelize a little bit and it's oh, it smells amazing. So the bacon kind of overrides all the veggie um Flavor, so it makes it really good for kids love bacon. So um, I found that all the kids really love this one. So five minutes, 120 speed one. And away we go. And there we go. Sorry. No. <laughs> I'm finished. <laughs> uh -huh, I was going to say amazing. That's um, so quick so far. The, a super yeah. easy one, isn't it? Yeah, it's so quick. It's so great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are going to pop on over and see Jess while that's cooking away. Thanks, Emma. Hey, everyone. I'm Jess. Um, so I am Thermi Life on the Farm on Instagram and Facebook. Um, tonight, <laughs> sorry, I'm going to make some muesli bars. Um, we find these great for the kids' lunch boxes. They're good for kinder. They're good for school. Um, and my husband's a farmer and he makes them in his lunch box as well. Um, this recipe I've got is actually from the um, Bake Play Smile website. Um, and it's a nut-free muesli bar, which is great for some people's schools um, say that you have to have nut-free now. So I find this recipe really good and great to um, – sort of be able to make it your own. You can make any modification you like. So we'll just use the machine in manual mode now. So I just need 125 grams of butter. Um, I don't know why it took me this long to work this out myself, but a hot tip I will give everyone is when I um, buy butter in the big blocks, I now just bring it home and cut it up into small chunks and keep it in the fridge like that because it just makes everything so much quicker and easier when you're cooking 
Um, 170 grams of honey. Just go right here. Then we'll just measure that straight into the bowl. Not quite enough in that one. Hmm. Okay. Um, and it's also asking for 70 grams of brown sugar. So there's something, it's usually about something that you guys are buying at the moment. I find they are seriously like the most expensive thing to buy unless they're unspecial and they're really full of sugar and that sort of thing. So, um, then we're going to pop the lid on and we are going to melt that all together. So we just need to go three minutes at, sorry, out of touch reading a recipe again, um, 80 degrees. I'm so used to guided cooking on speed three. Yeah, I make a nice um, chocolate chip muesli bar too, Jess, which is delicious. But um, I am. Yeah, yeah we'll they're say, so I make expensive, aren't they? Oh, it's, it's incredible. So I'll be making us tonight in this um, little snack bar mould from the mix shop. So to me, this is perfect. It already um, puts it in the actual, um, as you can see there, they're just like small little muesli bar size. But you can also make this um, recipe just in a square pan if that's what you've got, and then you just cut it up into bar shapes or whatever size you need. So um, for my, like, three-year-old kinder daughter, I won't give her the full bar. I'll just cut it in half or something. But my husband usually takes two, and my um, now grade one will take one full bar. So um, also with this recipe as well, you can add any sort of fruit that you want. So... I'm going to make an apricot one tonight, but if your kids don't like apricot or they want chalk chip like Erin makes, then feel free to sub that in. Um, you can put sultanas, you can put all sorts of things in there. All right, so that's about a minute. That's about half the time and it sounds like it's all melted. So I might stop there. It's pretty warm up here today, so it's not going to take that long to melt. So you can see there that that's all melted nicely together. So as I said, it didn't take the full three minutes. Um, and now into that, this recipe is so simple. We just add all the remaining ingredients. So we have um, some cinnamon. Pop that in. Again, if your kids aren't going to like um, any of these things, then just leave them out or put some vanilla extract. Now... I don't know if you've bought that um, lately either, but I find that really expensive too. And there's a great recipe on Cookie Do to make it yourself. So I just buy the vanilla beans and then make it myself, which is much cheaper. Um, it does, the recipe does ask for salt, but I'm not going to put it in because I used salted butter. So um, there, I don't need to um, put it in there. I just put in some rolled oats. We need 110 grams. Oh, too much, but that's okay. I kind of measure with my heart with a lot of those recipes. Put in some coconut. As you can probably hear in the background, not all my kids are in bed. So it's good fun. Right. Uh, we just need some plain flour. And just a little bit, just 50 grams of that. Um, and so this is where you add in your dried fruit. So it's asking for 150 grams of dried fruit. You can put in sultanas, um, 
raisins. You could probably could put in seeds here at this step if you like. I'm just using some um, apricot. This, these were just whole apricots that I um, chopped up before to make them diced. And I just, um, I just popped it in at, um, I put it about 250 grams in and chopped them for, I think it was about eight seconds on speed five and they became a perfect um, chopped apricot consistency. out there didn't mean to do that um and then just some it talks to them puffed rice but i'm just going to put in some rice bubbles um i find they work pretty well and i've always got them on hand so just 25 grams of that go and now that's everything we're just going to pop the lid on and mix that for eight seconds on reverse Down to eight seconds. Reverse speed four. I'll show you what that looks like in there. So that's all mixed up pretty well. I just scrape down the sides and I might just mix it for another few seconds just to make sure it's all really nice and mixed in there. So I'll just do maybe another four seconds um, on re reverse speed four again. All right. So that's it there, like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'll just put the camera down a little bit here so you can see the snack bar mold here. And it's as simple as getting a spoon and just popping it in, in the mold like that. I won't do them all, but I'll do a couple of them here for you. Um, just make sure that you really push it in. You want to make sure that if you're using a tray or whatever you're using, like even your square tray, you just want to push it down so that it all like um, is nice and firm in the tray. You can see there that they are um, just pushed in like that. Now this mixture will do both of these. So you make about 12, um, 12 of the bars. And now these bars just need to go into the, um, the oven for about, the, if it's in the tray, it takes about 20 minutes. Um, but I find in these snack bar molds, it only takes about um, 15 minutes or so. But you just watch them and make sure that they're just going a bit brown around the edges. And they are your muesli bars. So from this point here, you could um, push in some chocolate chips if you want to. Um, and then they can just have a few chocolate chips on top. Um, but I'll show you with mine. I actually drizzle mine with, um, for the apricot ones, I just drizzle them with a little bit of white chocolate on top, which just adds a little bit more um, decadence to it, but they're beautiful. And so they're the muesli awesome. bars. Thanks, Jess. All right, we will just come back to Ema and she can finish off her zucchini slice quickly for us. Sorry, guys, we're running probably five minutes over. I won't hold you up too much longer. So we've sautéed the bacon and the onions really quickly there and it smells really good uh now it's just put really just putting the zucchini mix back in and then we'll add there's 100 grams of peas it says if you can add them frozen or fresh it really doesn't matter which is great if you're time poor uh five eggs so these are fresh eggs and then there's 80 grams of olive oil and also a hundred, to bind it all, there's 100 grams of rice flour, which I've made just by getting uh, using long grain rice and whizzing it up for two minutes in the Thermomix to make rice flour. So you can actually just buy your rice in bulk and then blend it up. And um, so it's a really good money saving tip. And that's what will be binding it together. And then we just pop a pinch of salt 
and pepper. Now we're just going to combine all of this, um, but we're going to combine it for 10 seconds on the reverse. So if you press your little blender to reverse um, on the right hand side and then with speed four on reverse. And this is so, I just want to go. The reason uh, we do it on reverse is just so that um, the peas don't get all mangled up. So the peas are actually all still whole in it, which is great. So now it's all whizzed up into a batter and we're just gonna pour it into pour it in. So I like to just pour it in about halfway until they're all filled up. And then go back and fill it the rest of the way. You can also add um, spinach to the recipe as well. Uh, spinach or silver beet or kale. You can add 60 grams of that in, or if you don't have it, you can leave it out as well. It's all about having, like for us, it's about what we have in the garden. So this isn't the time of year when silver beet really traditionally grows. It gets a bit too hot. So we'll just leave it out. Look at that, we're going to have enough. Perfect, nailed it. <laughs> yeah, I know, and it's so lovely and green. I love green. <laughs> so I've actually got some that I've made earlier here. And so we pop it in the oven for 30 minutes at 180. And I'll just, so as you can see, like they will freeze really well. I pop them in a big container in the freezer. And this is a, isn't that lovely? Mm, yum. <laughs> yeah, and it's so Great quick and easy to, to make. That tray. Yeah. Yeah, I love using that tray just because everything fits in so neatly into the freezer. <laughs> love it. Thanks, Ema. We're going to quickly pop no. up to Jess. Um, I hope you guys are happy to stay around for five more minutes because Jess has got one really quick recipe that I think you are going to love. It is a Nutri-Grain bar um, and it'll only take a couple of minutes to show you. Um, so if you're happy to stick around for a few more minutes, we would love that. All right. So really quickly, this is a Nutri-Grain bar. It is on the recipe community. Um, so we can pop the link in the um, in the chat box, but I've just uploaded it to my cookie do. So make it that bit quicker. So this is to be like the um, bars that you, the Nutri-Grain bars that you find in the supermarket. So we need 140 grams of honey. Let's pop that in. There we go. Um, and then we also need um, 80 grams of coconut oil. So you can use liquid or um, solid coconut oil. I'm using solid, but it's hot enough here that it's actually already liquid. So I'll just be able to pour that straight in. Now, both the bars that I've made tonight um, can both be frozen, um, popped in the freezer. So that they're a really great option um, to have on hand for lunches and that. We'll just pop that on and we're just going to melt that together. Just going to do a minute at 50 degrees on speed three. So is anyone buying the Nutri-Grain bars in the supermarket? This is something my kids would ask for constantly and I don't buy um, until I found this recipe. So I'm just going to quickly melt that together. I won't need the full minute. I'll just give it about 30 seconds because the um, coconut oil is actually already melted. So I'll just stop it there and we'll have a look. You can see there, it's all like nicely melted. Um, so then the next step is to put in 200 grams of Nutri-Grain. Um, so 
just straight in. Okay. And then we're just going to mix that for 30 seconds on reverse, speed two. So this is just going to make sure, might be a bit loud, but this is just going to make sure that all the new grain is coated with the um, coconut oil and the honey. Um, so now I'm going to use the same, um, this is the mini loaf pan from the shop. So these ones, I find they seem to be a bit, um, the bar size needs to be that little bit deeper than the snack bar. You can also use the square um, loaf pin, just um, like before, and you can cut it into pieces. So we'll close out of that again, and I'll just show you there. So you can see there, it just probably from your end, just looks like Nutri-Grain, but it's all nicely coated with the um, honey and coconut mixture. Then all we do, so that's that's it. That's all we have to do to make that. All we do is pop it in the in the molds like this. And again, another hot tip here is make sure you push it all down and really push it in there and fill each bar. Because if you don't push it in a lot and you leave it um, a bit loose in there, I suppose you could say it doesn't. I've found that the bars will break apart, but. Um, if you push it all in, it it works really well. So then these just go um, even more simple than the muesli bars. These just go straight in the fridge to harden up. That um, the honey and the coconut oil will harden. They will stick it all together. Um, and then I find you can you'll see in the recipe go on to the next step and it goes to melt some chocolate. I find it's best to put them in the fridge first. Let them harden up. Then come back, melt the chocolate, and just drizzle some chocolate on the top. So you can see there, they're just um, pushed into the little bar mold, and then they will harden in the fridge. And they are your Nutri-Grain bars, and they're perfect for lunch boxes. Amazing. Thanks, Jess. Did you have some done, like, ones out of yes. the Yes, I can grab them. Before? Yeah, yep. if you don't mind. Just um, very nice, kindly made some this morning for us so that we could see the finished product. So this is some here now. So I'll just pop one out there. They just pop out and they're covered in chocolate on top. And again, you can put as much or as little chocolate as you like. Um, and they're just the Nutri-Grain bar. They're delicious, but keep them in the fridge. Um, at room temperature, they will get, um, the coconut oil will get warm and they'll get a bit soft, um, but you can freeze them and they freeze fine. So, um, and they will last a couple of weeks in the fridge too. Um, awesome. While I'm going, these are the oh, yeah. muesli bars. So these are some I made earlier as well, and I just drizzled them with some chocolate. But they are the apricot and white chocolate muesli bars. So perfect for the lunchbox. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jess. I think both of those would be a hit with my kids. That's for sure. Yeah, my kids love them, big mm -hmm. and small. All right, we'll head back to Maddie. She can show us her finished muffins, and then we're done. Hi everyone. So I've got my muffins here. So I've got, oops, so I'm dipping them all on the floor. Uh, I've got 12 big muffins and got 12 little muffins as well. Um, so I probably would have cooked them a little bit less, but I've always got a bit distracted. Um, so they are a little bit on the browner side, but they are still going to be just super delicious. And this is the spice as well. It is still got the amount of chocolate that is going to need to be set. I left it on the bench and I got distracted. Um, so it is um, super yummy. Uh, it does need to be for a refrigerator, otherwise it does sort of disintegrate a little bit as well. But yeah, thanks very much for coming and watching. Um, I'm also the Busy Family fan on Instagram. So I'd love for you to follow my page as well. Awesome. Thanks so much, Manny. I'll just come back. Uh, we'll go quickly go to Emma. See hers again. Have you got your finished ones there, Emma? You've put them away now. She's on mute. But there you go. There are our finished zucchini slices too. Thank you so much, Emma, for sharing those with us and cooking tonight. No <laughs> uh, Emma is what red what what's your um, Instagram again? Um Red Dirt Road Life on Instagram. 
amazing. <laughs> so follow Ema as well if you're not already. Uh, and we'll come back to me quickly. All right. Get rid of that. And our, all of our beautiful bread savouries are done as well. So we have got our bread rolls, our cheese and bacon rolls, our Vegemite and cheese scrolls, and our mini hot dogs as well. So um, all of these, um, I'm pretty sure I was thinking back, everything we've made tonight is um, freezer friendly as well. So do a cook up in the next week or so. It'll make your life so much easier come the start of school term. Um, but again, if you've got any questions about anything we've cooked tonight, anything at all, please don't hesitate to sing out. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed it and learned something new. And um, we do have so much happening in Theramix at the moment. Like I mentioned earlier, we've got our brand new set of host rewards. Um, we also have the VacuSeal, um, the small and medium and the wand as our free gift with purchase at the moment, which started on Monday. You are going to love that. It keeps your food so fresh and um, our berries last over a week and it. it's amazing. Um, and we also do have a couple of um, really incredible offers for anyone thinking about joining the team at the moment. So um, I absolutely love my team. I love cooking with them and I would love you guys to join us as well. Um, so we do have our Earn For offer running that started this week too, which means if you join our team and um, choose to earn a Thermomix, you can do so in four sales instead of the usual six. Um, like I said earlier, it's my favourite, favourite way to get a Thermomix in your bench. It's how I did it and I love it. So achievable and um, incredible that you can get a Thermomix with only four sales. You can stay on with our team. You can take your Thermomix and go. You can do whatever you like after that, though you're not locked in at any stage. Um, but we also do have another couple of incredible incentives we're working towards at the moment. We've found out that our ThermoFest trip this year is in Bali. So we are working towards that. We also are earning a new super incentive, which is a Cobalt robot vacuum. So if you join our team, you can you can um, earn all of these things too. And incredibly, we have just launched our new um, booster rewards program. So this is for consultants that are in month three to 12 of their business and they can earn over $5,000 in incentives on top of their commission and kind of the normal monthly consultant incentives as well. So things like an extra Thermomix, a Nirvana pizza oven, a cutter, the new sensor that's coming out, um, rose gold trays, it's just so much. I'm so jealous that I'm not in that period of um, being a consultant, but it really is an incredible offer. So if any of these things interest you, please reach out to your consultant or to one of us. We would love to chat to you. Um, if you want, I'm more than happy to run a really quick obligation-free info session after this tonight if you want to stay on and learn a bit more. Otherwise, I'm happy to do one at any stage as well um, or chat to you about what's involved with joining the team. So. Again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate each and every one of you. Um, and let us know if you make any of these things and good luck with getting back to school in a, in a week or two. Uh, I can't wait. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody. We will see you all soon. Thank you.